Hello and welcome back to Fallout 76. Today we're going to have a look at my version of the ghoul. If you've seen the Fallout TV show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those that haven't seen it, the ghoul is one of the main characters in the show. Now, unfortunately, we can't role play the ghoul exactly as he is in the show for several reasons, and we'll have to go over some of the choices I had to make. The first thing that comes up is there is no ghoul option in the game. You have to play as a human. So that is the first choice we have to make. You can see my character. Obviously, he's not a ghoul. Now, there is a ghoul mask in the game, but there are a couple of problems with it. So here's the ghoul mask, and the pro first problem with it is, is a feral ghoul mask, and our character is not a feral ghoul, he's just a regular ghoul, so that doesn't really work. The look is all wrong. Uh, the other problem with it is it takes up the same slot as the hat. So if you're wearing the cowboy hat, which you really want that look, uh, it, doesn't, it won't work with the mask. So that's the other problem. So we decided to go a different direction. So I basically went into the uh, change appearance setting, it's under the menu, and tried to make the character look as ghoulish as I could. Obviously there's there's uh, a few issues here. Now I didn't do anything with the top of the head because it's covered by the hat, so I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, one of the problems is you can't get rid of eyebrows. There's no setting for that. You could change the thickness, you could change the color, uh, but really you end up with just eyebrows that look like eyebrows, so that's a problem. So what I did is I tried to make the cheeks as sunken in as I could, and I added blemishes whenever it looked reasonable, like you could see the burn marks on there, help with the skin a little bit. I added some wrinkles uh, around the mouth to help with that. Uh, there's a lot of other blemishes. Mo mostly they are like red splotches and stuff, and they look more like he's got some sort of disease or he's been beat up. So it, this you can't really do a whole lot. And with the nose, I tried to pick the option that was as wide as possible. The ghoul on the TV show doesn't have a nose. He just has two basically nose holes in his face. Uh, we couldn't do that, so I tried to make the nose as wide and with the nostrils as big as possible and tilt it up a little bit. So it almost looks more like a pig nose than anything, but that's as close as I would come, so the rest we just have to use our imagination. The other thing we had to decide was if we are going to go low health or full health, and there are reasons to do either one. So ghouls kind of shrug off radiation, so if you went full health with maxed out what rads, that would kind of make sense there. You're basically going to shrug off radiation most of the time, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, but if you've ever been hit by a feral ghoul, they inflict a lot of radiation. So ghouls are full of rads, so that also makes a lot of sense as well. Ultimately, because of the play style, we're not sneaking around, uh, we're not using suppressed weapons. It made more sense to try and get as much damage as possible, so that's why I chose the low health option. Another issue with it is the ghoul on the TV show has a kick-ass pistol. And that pistol does not exist in Fallout 76. So we have to make some, uh, basically had to make some choices with the weapons. And I'll go over the gear in a little bit. And also you can see our ghoul is wearing a Pip-Boy. The one in the TV show doesn't have a Pip-Boy. As far as we know, he was never a Vault Dweller. Maybe something will be revealed in uh, Season 2 that'll change that. But as far as we know, he's not a Vault Dweller, never has been a Vault Dweller. So he wouldn't have a Pip-Boy. Wouldn't be using Vats. Uh, but we don't have that choice. We have to wear a Pip-Boy, and actually Vats makes a lot of sense because of the weapons we're using, because we're not sneaking around. We kind of need it. We need Vats. We need those critical hits. So that is the direction we're going. So this is not a brand new character, but it is not a maxed out character either. I do have legendary perks, but you can see they're not all maxed out. Uh, we also have follow-through. Follow-through is actually not going to do anything for this particular build because we are not sneaking. Everything else is legendary specials. We have a total of 16 extra special points. Uh, but there are cuts you can make here and there to make this work if you don't have that many points, and I'll talk about those as we go through the build. So under Strength, we have Traveling Pharmacy to reduce the weight of our chems, and we have Blocker because we want to help with our defense as much as possible. We won't be sneaking, so if we have melee enemies, more than likely they will get to us, hit us, so Blocker is a big help there. Bandolier right here, that is the first place you could actually cut. Because of the weapons we're using, we really don't need this uh, ammo weight reduction, so there's two points you could remove right there. We will be playing with rifles, or with a rifle, and pistols. So for the rifles, we have a maximum rank of all the rifle and perks, along with tank killer and concentrated fire so we can target specific limbs. This is another place you could make uh, some cuts, especially if you're playing low health because you do get extra damage in other ways. You could actually go to rank one of all the rifleman perks. That would save you six points right there. We have Life Giver. Uh, you always run this on a low health character just because... Any amount of health you can do is uh, going to help your survivability. So even though we're getting 45 to uh, 45 additional health, we're playing at 20% health. So that really only adds nine points to our health. However, that can mean maybe we take one or two more hits before we die. So that could be really helpful. 
We have fireproof. Now, this is another area where you could make a cut because if you're wearing, say, a dense chest piece, you can get a reduction from incoming explosive damage. So fireproof could go away, but we're using it because we have the points. But there's another three points you could do without. Lone Wanderer, we are not playing on a team, so definitely want to use this. We take 20% less damage and gain 30% AP regen. That's really helpful. Tenderizer, this is another thing you could cut because we are using critical hits. Most enemies are going to die. We're going to hit them once. Our luck is going to be 33. So we're going to do a critical hit every other shot. So first hit, we hit them. Second hit, we kill them with a critical hit. Tenderizer is really never going to come into play. So you could actually get rid of this as well. So there's three more points. And we have Nerd Rage. This is mainly for the extra damage. But when we're below 20% health, we gain 40 damage resist, 20% damage, and 15% AP regen. And we have Gunsmith help our guns break a little slower. Next up, we have Agility. We've got Gunslinger perks because we are using a revolver. We can't max them out because Agility is crowded, so we have ranks 1, 2, and 3. We have guns, uh, Gun Fu for target switching. We have Adrenaline maxed out because we want to crank up that damage as much as possible because you're almost always facing a group of enemies. And we have Dodgy. This is, another, uh, this is a defensive perk that will help us stay alive, avoid 30% of incoming damage at the cost of 30 action points. And our AP regen is not an issue, even though we're using bats. So this is something we want. We have mutations and we want to hold on to them. So we have starch genes. Because we're playing low health, we're running serendipity. This is an excellent perk. While our uh, health is below 30%, which it always should be, we'll avoid damage 45% of the time. So that is massive. So almost half the time, we're not going to uh, take any damage. And this is a critical build, so we're using critical savvy and better criticals. We do use some food, so good with salt is there so it doesn't spoil so quickly. And I had one point left over, so I put it in bloody mess so our enemies would explode, which is always a fun effect. So the mutations we have. We have speed demon, mainly for that faster reload speed. We have herbivore because the foods we're using are veggie food, so we want double the benefit. Eagle eyes for extra critical hit damage. Bird bones gives us a little bit of extra agility, which translates into extra AP. And Adrenal Reaction, when our health is low, which it will be, we will do increased weapon damage. And we're only using a couple of foods here. We have Sweet, sweet Mute Fruit Tea for extra critical damage. You can see 100% more critical damage. That should give us a massive boost. And Company Tea for our AP regen. Now, our outfit is an Atomic Shop item, and I believe it's available now. It was a free one. We have the West Coast Duster and the West Coast Cowboy Hat. We're also using the vault jumpsuit as, a, as our under armor. And the reason we're using that is the plus two luck. Now our character wasn't a vault dweller, so a vault suit doesn't make a lot of sense. However, because it's under our armor, under our clothes, we never see it, so it doesn't really matter. And we have a full set of unyielding armor. It's actually a mix. The legs are secret service and the, uh, ar or the arms and the chest piece are Brotherhood Recon. I have no idea. I've had this character for a while. I don't remember why I have a split that way instead of all the same kind, but that's what I have. And uh, rolling armor kind of sucks. So since I have a full set of unyielding, it's not that great, but it is a full set of unyielding. We are going with that. For our weapons, our rifle is a lever action. Uh, it's aristocrats. So we're getting 50% because our caps are over 29,000 plus 50% critical damage and 25% less action point costs. That third star, I don't think AP cost is going to matter a whole lot in this. Uh, I'd rather have something like faster reload or faster crit refill, but I don't get to choose the stars and this is still a really good weapon. Now I have it modified with a calibrated receiver for extra critical hit damage. And I actually left the short stock on it. And that was mainly because in the show, the one he uses has a short stock. Other than that, we could have used uh, a different one to reduce our AP cost a little bit, increase the durability. But for role play purposes, I left it like this. And you can see it is unsuppressed. And since we don't have a super awesome pistol that blows holes in things, we have this. It is a Western Revolver. It is bloodied with plus 50% critical damage and minus 25% AP cost. Again, that third star, I'd rather have it be something like faster reload, faster crit refill, but this'll do nicely. We also have it modified with a calibrated receiver for that extra critical hit damage. It's always a little weird for me having a character that doesn't sneak because that tends to be my favorite play style, unless I'm doing a heavy gunner. Uh, it's just kind of the way I like to do things. Now, for some enemies, like humans, humans are pretty... Uh, I don't even need to use critical hits on this. Human enemies are pretty uh, pretty weak, pretty flimsy, but there's a critical hit. You can see the damage is pretty big. But we can wander on through the town. There's a grenade. We can wander on through the town and uh, critical hit to you. You can see we're... Uh, okay. Well, when we miss... <laughs> When we miss, we don't uh, get a critical hit. That is one of the downsides of both of these weapons, actually, is that they are kind of, kind of prone to uh, get a critical hit on you. They are kind of prone to just miss randomly, even though your hit chance is 
There are times you'll just miss over and over again. Looks like we've got a straggler. I didn't even see them. They obviously didn't see me since they were holding a clipboard and not a weapon. Let's see how we do against some um, robots. Yeah, having every other every other shot, getting that luck at 33 is really important. Having critical hits at every other shot, especially when you are... Uh, yeah, we've got some vertebrates overhead, so the game decided not to cooperate with me, so there's that. But yeah, those critical hits, uh, they are going to do the heavy lifting on this one. And let's see, we've got, geez, we got a cluster up here. Ooh. Well, a critical hit wasn't, uh, maybe I didn't have one. I don't know. Critical hit should have been enough, and of course he's, uh, okay. <laughs> when the bodies die and they block access, there we go. Critical hit, nope, not enough. There we go. Now, one of the ways you can help with survivability on something like this kind of character is you can just stock yourself with uh, stim packs and just use Born Survivor, take off, just put on one rank of Born Survivor. Since you're always going to be under the, I think one rank is 20%, so it should just trigger all the time. And as long as you have, say, hundreds of stim packs, uh, it should keep you alive. Just constantly stimming you every, what is it, 20 seconds or 30 seconds, something like that. Uh, then your health will just kind of always be, you know, topped off, at least topped off at the 20% level. But so far with our mix of perks, I don't want to jinx myself, but with our mix of perks, we seem to be doing okay. But there's those uh, wonderful misses that you get from time to time. So yeah, between serendipity and uh, these things hit hard, but you can see with uh, critical hits and gun fu and all that other stuff, we're doing okay. Yeah, the timing on that, that does happen. Sometimes the game doesn't care that I'm recording and the timing is just terrible with a lot of extra noise. Looks like we've got a Robo Brain and a Cultus over here. I think the Cultus go away la uh, later or pretty soon anyway. So <laughs> I'll be glad when they're gone from the game. They're just kind of annoying. Uh, their loot bag is not all that great and they're really tanky. They can take a lot of hits, but uh, we can still out damage them. Now, between these two weapons, I will say I prefer the revolver the most. It's just, it just has a better feel to it. It's just a little more, a little more satisfying to use. Uh, they're both prone to, let's see, let's, they're both, they're both prone to this kind of thing though, where they uh, just kind of miss over and over again. But you can see when we do connect, we got a critical hit for him. When we do connect, we do a lot of damage. So let's see how we do when we have a town full of big angry ghouls shooting at us. And uh, yeah. Problem with single shot weapons, that's just how it is. Vats is just prone to miss a lot and there's not much you could do about it. Uh, actually there is. One thing I have found is if you're using a critical hit for you, is that if you're using a gun that has Vats hit chance, uh, say a lever action, hunting rifle even, uh, those are all kind of buggy single shot weapons. I found that Vats hit chance makes a massive difference and cuts down the bugginess. But you can see we are uh, avoiding that damage rather well. All those defensive perks are doing a great job for us. And we are cleaning up this town. Even though there were no super mutants in the show. Ah, okay. Critical hit should be able enough to take out on the second shot. And there we go. But as you can see, even though we are playing low health, that doesn't necessarily mean squishy. It doesn't mean we die to uh, every hit. We're doing just fine. We haven't died yet. I haven't, uh, I haven't edit out, edited out any deaths. We're doing really well. This guy has not been visited in a while and he, he's feeling rather left out. So I thought we'd remedy that right now. There's a first shot, wake him up from his slumber, get him uh, chasing after us. See what we can do. All right, critical hits. Eh, criticals are doing pretty nice work. Yeah, we'll, uh, we should get him down before he gets to us and there he goes. And there you have it, my take on the ghoul. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit one of the buttons down below and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Thank you very much.